Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about legendary and mythical Pokemon, one of the most popular parts of the Pokemon franchise. But moving forward, I think it's time that Game Freak limit the number of brand new legendaries and mythicals, and I think they need to shrink it by quite a bit. Let's discuss it. Now, I absolutely love legendary and mythical Pokemon. I love everything about what they mean to the Pokemon world, and I love that they mean a variety of different things. There is a hierarchy to how important and how awe-encompassing or all-encompassing legendary and mythical Pokemon are. Some of them simply act as stewards for the environment in which they live in, while others are global. They oversee the oceans and the land. They oversee space, the creation itself. There's a wide variety of reasons a Pokemon is considered legendary or mythical. But one of the things that Pokemon has been running into lately, even though it actually started quite a while ago now, is that it feels like there's not enough roles for every single legendary and mythical that they add. And there's two components to why I think this is a problem. The first is in the fact that a lot of them just simply get added on. A lot of mythical Pokemon have this problem. They're used as a token, a giveaway item for fans to keep them coming back to the game. They are given out through mystery gift. Oftentimes, they're not really incorporated into the lore and the story of Pokemon games as well as they should be. And it's my opinion, as a fan, that if that's the case, if you're going to add a mythical Pokemon and the only bit of lore and information you're going to get for it is through Pokedex entries, maybe some extra stuff in the anime or other forms of media, but you don't have anything specific to the game it's being given out in, then I don't think it necessarily has a place. Pokemon used to do this really well. Generation 4 and before, when there was a mythical Pokemon given away, when Wi-Fi eventually became a thing, but even before so, when you could go to your local Target or Toys R Us back in the GBA days, and get your special event Pokemon, there would be a gameplay mechanic incorporated into the games that it was given away in. It would take you to a special location where you could learn certain things about the Pokemon, get a new bit of lore that you didn't already experience in the game, or it had its own mini side story. Think about Darkrai and Cresselia in Generation 4 with the sailor's kid who was under a nightmare and you had to travel to the islands of Darkrai and Cresselia to actually solve this mystery. They had a purpose and a point in the world. The legendary Pokemon, the box art legendaries Dialga and Palkia, Kyogre and Groudon, Reshiram and Zekrom, they're always going to have a place and they're always going to have a purpose in Pokemon because they are incorporated directly into the story they're trying to tell. But some of these Pokemon, these mythicals and these legendaries that are on the outskirts of the lore, Game Freak needs to do a better job including them or else I don't think they should be included at all. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you wanna go the extra mile in supporting me, that would be very much appreciated. With that being said, let's get right back into the discussion. When you're dealing with this problem, it's difficult to separate the love people have for the designs of the Pokemon, what they can do in battle, and kind of like the in-universe reasons for why they exist. I want to attempt to do that here, but it's not going to be, you know, deeply effective. I apologize in advance. There's plenty of legendary and mythical Pokemon that actually have pretty viable roles competitively. Thinking about the uh, Landorus and the Thunderous and Tornadoses of the world that have their uses in VGC. I wanna kinda split that off and not really focus on that as much because one, it doesn't really fit my narrative and two, it's an area of the game that I don't particularly work a lot in so my knowledge is very minimal. But if you're looking at the other side, Generation 5 is really where you started to see this kind of split. Generation 5 had a lot of legendaries and mythicals. And ever since then, we've gotten a pretty healthy amount of them in every single generation. In the most recent generation, we had five legendaries and mythical Pokemon, to my knowledge. I believe I have that figure correct up in front of me. I don't necessarily think it's sustainable. And it's not sustainable because they're continuing to not find roles for these legendaries and these mythicals, except for the box art ones and the ones that directly impact the story. 
And they're also running into this issue where they like to include all of them per cycle of generation. In almost every new game, they add in some sort of way for the trainer to be able to catch all of the previous mythicals and legendaries. It was through wormholes in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon specifically. It was in the underground in Sword and Shield. They've done this in a lot of generations. In Black and White 2, there were a handful of legendary Pokemon that could be caught in the post game. In Oras, it was through Hoopa's Rings. They try to do this every single time. Eventually, they're going to hit a point just like with the Pokedex, where they're gonna say, okay, well, we might wanna start cutting down, we might not wanna add as many as before, and they're just gonna simply not make them available to us. And of course, knowing the Pokemon community, that's gonna start a lot of controversy. People are gonna say, they're limiting our access to legendaries and mythicals, they're not giving us all of them, they're making dex cuts. You know that's gonna come. Instead of cutting the number of new mythicals and legendaries that we eventually get access to in every generation, why not just limit the number of new ones? You're always going to have two box art legendaries, and you're always going to have, most likely, a third member of the trio somehow. Sword and Shield kind of split it off, as the uh, Eternatus really isn't... It's not necessarily the third member of a trio. It's kind of just the third Pokemon involved in the story. It doesn't really have a strong connection to the box art legendaries, but it still exists in some form. So for that reason, they need to do a better job of giving these Pokemon roles, these extra Pokemon. Generation 6 is the biggest culprit for this. So many mythical Pokemon seemed, at least on paper, to have places in the Kalos region where they would fit. Stories that could be told once they were given away through Mystery Gift. And yet, with almost all of them, they were given away, they were maybe highlighted in a Pokemon movie of the time, and that was pretty much it. So they're overstuffing legendaries and mythicals. They don't really have much of a purpose for them at many of these places, and it's just a really confusing system that they employ. As the generations roll on, it feels more and more like they are simply just gifts to keep the players involved in going back to the games. Now, BDSP, to its credit, you know, had purposes for its legendaries and mythicals, but it was only because it was a remake of a generation that originally had it. I'm not so confident that if these games were brand new and made today, they would have had that. So it's a circumstance that only existed because of what it was recreating. Heart Gold and Soul Silver, similarly as well, they had a lot of really good event Pokemon in those games, and they had purposes for existing in the Johto region itself. They had History and Gold and Silver, and they actually added other ones. Kyogre and Groudon and Rayquaza were added into those games, and you could catch them. They weren't in the originals, of course, because they didn't exist at the time. So they used to do a much better job handling all of these Pokemon. And it's also a greater discussion of size. We're getting to a point in Pokemon where there are a lot of them. We are almost at a thousand. We could hit it with Scarlet and Violet, even though I think they'll come just short because in the last couple gens, they really haven't been overwhelming us with brand new Pokemon. They've been doing a lot of forms. They've been doing a lower Pokedex count to begin with. So I don't think we'll hit it. But we need to start having a discussion of where we can kind of compartmentalize these things, where we can cut down so we're not over bloating this series. And I think not adding as many legendaries and mythicals as we were in the past might be the best way to do it. I also think that it would give each legendary and mythical a lot more of a purpose. You don't have to find and cherry pick various reasons for all of these Pokemon existing and bits of lore that can be incorporated to give them a purpose in the world itself. You can put more time and energy into each specific one to make them the best they are. And hopefully in a perfect world, that would also mean that these Pokemon would get their own events, would get their own side stories. Legends Arceus did a really good job giving events and side story information for all the various legendaries and mythicals of the Sinnoh region while introducing a brand new one as well. Legends Arceus is actually a pretty good template of how to do this moving forward. They gave forms to Dialga and Palkia. They didn't create brand new ones. They didn't create brand new legendaries to use for the story. They gave new forms to older ones, just like they'd been doing with regional variants. Instead of giving us a whole new bevy of mythicals and legendaries, we got a brand new genie Pokemon, for lack of a better, the Kami Trio. We got a fourth one. They handled it really well, and I think they can use that as a bit of a, a roadmap to what the future of Legendaries and Mythicals should be with a vastly reduced roster. So what do you guys think? 
Are you happy with the number of legendaries and mythicals we've been getting in recent gens? Do you think we should get less or do you think you, we should get more and you don't really care about any of my points? I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on and check out the join tab so you never miss another upload. And it would be really good if you would go the extra mile in supporting me if you have the opportunity and the ability. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.